Good morning and welcome back to a kooky corner of YouTube where you'll find me making bunnies. <laughs> oh, he's decided to have a fall over. These are the guys that I have been making. Oh, I'm juggling bunnies now, not the best look, and I'm also jiggling the camera. But yes, these are the guys I've been making. Um, remember way back when last year <laughs> and I showed you how to make a needle felted polystyrene based egg wow these are another kind of variation on a theme in which you can now make some bunnies to match your eggs and I'm going to show you the process of how I make these and uh, what kind of wool I use for them um, you can make them in a variety of colours, you can make them in any sizes that you would like to. So if you want to make bigger ones, um, you could make some on this size, which we made the, uh, the polystyrene eggs on. Uh, the ones I've used for these are this size, and I will measure them out for you in a moment. Uh, but yeah, that's what we're going to be doing today. So uh, sit down, grab your wool, and, um, and a felting needle and, and let's have a make of a few bunnies. Okay, so we're here on my work desk. Um, first of all, I was gonna measure those uh, polystyrene balls for you. So a bigger one, I would say is probably about three inches or thereabouts. The smaller one is probably about two and a half inches, uh, but you can get them varying sizes. And as long as you don't mind, it doesn't really matter what size base polystyrene egg you have. Uh, these are the two that I've got. So my ones were little small boys because I quite like the size of these. They're kind of kind of neat and they've got a little tail on the end as well. And basically they are the same process as doing um, a needle felted egg. I have got some more tips on the kind of wool that you can use um, which would be better for this. So I will go through that with you in a moment. So let's pop those to one side. You can sit there and watch guys while I make another one of your brethren. Okay, so I'm gonna do the small one again because I have a friend who wants one of these and I know that this particular color, this one here, is the one that she would like. So we're going to make that one. Um, the wool that I'm using, these guys do stand up, I promise you. If you want to make sure they stand up, I have toyed with the idea of putting some kind of ball bearing in the bottom. You know, the weebles. Weebles wobble, but they don't fall down. <laughs> I'm putting an age on myself, but yes, uh, that kind of thing. Also, um, some of these come with like a, a more flattened base. The ones I've got at the minute, the newer ones that I've got, I've got more of a, a, a proper egg-shaped base. So what I'm going to do is you kind of just press it down on your work surface and you can correct this with the wool in some way you can make the wool a bit flat on the bottom but I kind of try and push it in a little bit because it is a little bit mouldable so just to flatten it off rub it on your work surface alternatively you could um, flatten it with taking a little bit off with a scalpel but I, I'm not sure how that would go so I'm just going to go with my method of Ah, kind of staying in its place yeah that's good enough okay so back to the wool this is the wool that I'm going to use it comes in lots of different colors it is from world of wool which you'll find on the internet if you do a search for world of wool and it is if I can get this under here it is a carded perindale bat in the color dream so this is a 200 gram um, bat um, and it comes in a bag like this. But it's separated out with some paper, which is quite nice because it comes in like a roll. It's like, it's a little like pre-felt, but not pre-felt. Um, it's not as solid as a pre-felt. It's more um, like you can pull bits off it. So carded Parandel bat in Dream, if you want to do exactly the same color as me. Um, I'll try and find out the colors of the other ones for you as well, but I think they are also uh, carded Parandale bat because I bought a whole load of colours in that recently. The reason I like this 
is because it isn't um, what's the word I'm looking for it's not tops basically and Perindale is really good it's got more of a um, coarser feeling to it which is so much better for trying to get uh, a nice smooth needle felted surface on your egg um, if you're trying to do it with tops it will work you know any wool that you've got will work i'm just showing you what i have got in case you wanted to do the same but any wool that you've got try it um if you want to use tops i suggest you rough it up a little bit by using the the carding brushes just to give it a little bit more so that it's not all lying in one direction uh, the, the reason I say that is if you wrap it around your egg, it's going to be a little more difficult to get that um, smooth, uh, homogenous like feel to it and look to it. If you light, if it's got fibres that are all lying in one direction, then you're going to get a liney, a liney look, if that makes sense. <laughs> it probably doesn't, uh, but yeah. This is the recommended stuff. So something a little bit coarser and as a bat, a carded bat is great because it's already prepared for you. Okay, so into the meat of this then. Similar to the way we made the egg. I've just got my clover felting mat there. I don't actually really need it for the moment, so I'll pop it to one side. So you get your egg and you wrap around. We might not need all of this. <laughs> I'll just say that now. Uh, we may need only half of it perhaps so you don't really need an awful lot um, so you're kind of just making sure that it's covered also take away part of that so I'm going to take away part of that the good thing about this is if you've got any gaps you can just put them in afterwards so don't worry if you've got any little bits where it's showing through the white of the polystyrene because we can um, get rid of that that's all good Okay, so I've got something that will vaguely go around my egg. I can even take a bit more off, perhaps. I don't want to take too much off. Um, but as I say, I can correct this later on because we're going to be pushing down into it with our felting tools. Now, you've got a choice of felting tools. You can either go with the singular needle. I have got a three needle here. Um, it's a clove pen brush, but with some... Um, um, different needles inside it to the ones that came with it and this is my five needle clover tool also with some different needles in it it's the Heidi Feathers brand of needles that I tend to really enjoy using uh, so if you search up Heidi Feathers I'll put all these down into the description so that you don't have to go hunting and I'll put you links down to both World of Wool and the Heidi Feathers needles the clover tools I think I got off Amazon um, so both of these I got off Amazon there are a cheaper version of this as well I do believe it's listed now um, there isn't a clover one but I do really like the clover brand just because I trust it uh, probably the others are just as good and I just um, I'm sticking to my branded item <laughs> okay so I'm going to go in with the three tool just because I don't want to because it's a small little egg I don't want to overwhelm it with the big one and what we're going to do I'll take this up a little closer literally straight in and out with whichever tool so let's say you're doing it with a singular tool in and out um don't hold it as far down as I was holding it there you can get a, a tool holder if you want to, like this wooden one. You can buy these quite easily from people who sell the needles. And it is just a simple in and out. You don't need to go too far in with your needle because the barbs, if you can see, let me, the barbs are only on that first part there. Can you see from there to there? That's where the barbs are. quite therapeutic I'm holding it up so that you can see the process but if I were you <laughs> if I were a sensible me I'd have this on a surface because I'm not going all the way through and this egg is quite thick 
you don't actually need to have a felting mat or a felting brush. You are just going to literally go around with your needle until all of your egg is covered. And stretch it out a little bit. If you find you have gaps when you're doing it, take a piece off and then just place it on and felt it in. It's as simple as that. I'm going to do this one and then I'll come back and then um, I'll show you if I've got any gaps and, and how we deal with them. Okay. Okay, so I'm not finished needle felting this yet, but I just wanted to show you how you deal with any areas that are kind of on the thinner side. I can see a little patch there. You can see there. It's just a bit thinner on the wall. And what I do on this occasion, you get a small amount of your wool. <laughs> Literally just lay it on top of the area where it's quite thin and just felt it in. Remembering not to go too far in with your needle because the barbs are only on that first part as I mentioned. And don't bend your needle when it's in there. So don't wiggle it once it's inside and wiggle it around. That will just result in you breaking a needle and maybe um, damaging the piece that you're making because you might not be able to get the, the needle tip out of it. And also uh, it could fly. <laughs> and I mean that quite sincerely. Um, some of these actually, the tips, if if I've not been looking carefully at what I've been doing, the tip can literally just break off and fly across the room, which is not the best thing, is it? <laughs> it's also a good idea because I wear um, reading glasses and glasses for close up work. Um, my eyes are mainly protected. Um, if you're feeling at all worried about that, I suggest you grab a pair of clear glasses or some goggles just to wear if it worries you about breaking needles. But if you do what I said and just put it in to the smallest point, just to there, that's where the barbs are. You're not going to do anything more apart from make a big hole in your work. Can you see it gets bigger as it goes up? The part where it's the thinnest is the part where you need to make sure it's only going in to that amount and, it, and as you finish off your egg and if you want to get a smoother surface you're doing really light really light pokes just like this one just to get that surface smooth can you see that's not hardly making an impact at all but yes that is how you deal with making your egg look smooth I'm going to continue with this one until I've got it to the smoothest that I'd like and then we'll have a look at um, how I do, do the additions, such as making his little muzzle. What I use for his eyes, his tail, and how to make the ears and attach them. Okay, so I'll be back in a moment. Okay, so I've got my egg needle felted. It's probably not as felted as I would make it usually I'd probably just keep going a little bit more just to keep it a little smoother and kind of tuck in all these little hairs but to be honest I think that's not too bad for the purposes of showing you what I need to do so the next thing we're going to need to do is to have a look at making the the ears for your piece and I think we're going to do the ears first because I think once you position the ears you can tend to see where the rest of it will fit in so for the ears you will need your felting mat or felting brush this is a clover felting brush this is the larger size one you can get two different sizes of this and you will need two equal parts of a matching wool if you want to do contrasting ears you could do i'm just picking out little bits of debris that are still in the wool sometimes you'll find that it's inevitable in any wool that you'll find little bits of um, where a sheep has been rubbing up against <laughs> a fence or where there's some leaves in it or something. It's the way it goes and we just have to deal with that as we come up against it. It's not often, it's more in the, the core wool you'll find things like this. Most of it's been taken out but inevitably there's going to be little bits left over 
and it, it's not defective in any way that's just the way it is in the natural product which sheep's wool is okay so now i've got two mm, roughly equal sized pieces of felt kind of measure them out a bit yeah that's about right you can alter this again as you go along now what we're going, going to do is try and get them into some kind of an ear shape only roughly it doesn't have to be perfect because the needle's going to do the most of this so for this point i'm going to use my three needle again and we're going to start to felt it down now what we're going to do is we're going to felt the top half and we're going to leave a little bit of fluffy at the bottom so that we can attach it to our bunny so don't go all the way down and what I suggest is that you do both of them at once not literally <laughs> so once you've got one part vaguely in shape because you want them both to be fairly equal um, trying to roll that so that we can kind of get a similar size if you want to just pull it in a little bit and then you'll be able to see if you need to add any more into any one of them to make them the size you want them but at the moment they're looking okay just to get down some flat they won't end up this size I'll just say to you this uh, because we're going to do a little process where we try and make them more ear shaped but for now we're just concentrating on trying to get similar size shape for both of the ears remember to keep your fingers out of the way when you are needle felting you can also wear finger protectors which you can buy to protect your fingers obviously from um, any stabbages that may occur <laughs> okay so they're vaguely getting to be about the same size now so what I do now is I start to shape them so I'll pull in the corners corners pull in the edges even so that we can get kind of a little bit I don't know if you can see on this one go on this one it's got kind of a thicker ridge around the outside you probably see better on this one actually you can see his ears have got a bit of a thicker ridge around them so we're just shaping them obviously it's kind of a bit more pointed on the top end I wouldn't say it's a point point it's more of a roundy point <laughs> and you just shape it as you go along so pulling those threads in from the threads fibers in from the um, from the outside in and then just felting them down in the middle you can felt a little bit more because that will give you more of a, a shape to your ear you can see we're getting more of an ear shape going on now I'm going to keep going with this and you're literally looking at it eyeballing it also turn it over as well rabbits do have fluffy ears so it doesn't really matter if they're a bit fluffy I quite like a fluffy ear on my bunnies so it depends on what you want as to how much your needle felt either side you can just flip it over and just give it a little bit of a felting if you like or you can make it as smooth as you want it to be it will get smoother with more working obviously but you can see that the process is fairly simple just roll it in just keep rolling 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 just to kind of get that shape and just gently felting it into place because you can always change it if you don't like the way it's going you can maneuver it and pull it back out again but I'm kind of liking the way this is going so I'm just kind of getting underneath from the side and felting from the side I'm not bending my needle but I'm kind of you can twist it around if you want to and felt it from the top I kind of look to see how it's going on the top as well so you can see there that we have got a part of an ear it is not finished yet by any stretch of the imagination because what I want to do is I'll get it against my bunny and see how much more I need it to be 
um, felter down. I'm thinking that's probably going to be about the right size for the one I want to make. I think this one had bigger ears. But then all bunnies are different. They all have their own personality. And um, so that's what we're going to do with this one. This one's going to have ears to about there, I would say. So what I'm going to do now is to bring it in. I kind of, I'm not folding it in in half. I'm kind of pulling both ends together. And at the base of where the ear is going to be, can you see? I'm just felting that base together on both sides. So flipping it over and just giving it a felt together. So we get that shape and kind of shaping the ear. Okay, so we've got that shape now. That can do with more needle felting, obviously. If you like fluffy ears, leave them fluffy. It's all down to your personal choice. It is felted. It's just a matter of the degree of the amount of felting that you want to add in. So what I'm going to do now is I'm going to, because the other one still needs to be done, I'm going to get this one and try and match it as close as possible to the one I've already made. And I'll be back when they are both ready to be attached. Okay, so I've got to the point now where they're not perfect, but they are good enough for me to show you how to attach them. So I've got two ears now. Um, if you want to, if you've got some sticky out bits that you don't really want to keep on your ear, you can get a very sharp pair of scissors. And I've got my little desk bin here. I'm just snipping off. Make sure your scissors are sharp, so otherwise you're just gonna be hacking away with no result. You can get really into it with these ones. So that's what you need to do um, just to trim them down. If you want to, if you like fluffy ears and you like them to be nice and fuzzy, you go with it. <laughs> okay, so now to attach the ears. I'm just throwing all my needles all over my desk. Um, looking at the base of these, I look to have quite a bit of wool going on there. So you can do one of two things. You can very gently pull away some excess, which is what I'm trying to do here. The reason I don't chop them, if I don't, if I can't, if I don't have to chop them, sometimes you have to use scissors and, and that's the way forward with it. But other, other times I just kind of, if I can, put it away and this is because then it doesn't damage or make a blunt edge on your fibers it's like when you cut hair you know when you do a blunt cut fringe or something um, it leaves it kind of very straight and that means it's not going to needle felt in as well it still will needle felt in but you you won't be able to hide it as well so if you look at my bunny here I'm kind of eyeballing it position wise to see where I'm going to attach it now this is a fiddly bit. If you want to, if you really want to, you could put a pin in here. One of the, let me show you. These bobble-headed pins I've had hanging around on my desk for a while. And you can position it. Make sure you go down the middle. Obviously that's a bit too to the top. Let's put it more to the side. Now, you have to be more careful when you need the felting because you don't want to hit that pin and break your needle. But then what you're going to do is you're going to take that excess fluff that was around the bottom and then felt that into your bunny's head from the back. It's kind of like from the back area there. You don't have to use the pin. I don't generally use the pin, but sometimes I find it might be helpful for people who worry that it's going to go out of place while they're trying to felt it. If you put that little bobble-headed pin in there, then that will help you get to the stage where you can take it out. Now you want to be really, really careful now. So I'm going to go in with my singular needle just to felt around that to make sure that it's really securely attached to my bunny's head. So we don't want his ears falling off. <laughs> a bunny with no ears is very sad. A sad thing to think about. So that's his first ear. 
in the main on him. Now you can see that bit at the bottom where I needle felted through both layers very lightly. That's kind of given it some shape to attach on. So we're going to do the same thing now with the other side. So I'm kind of trying to get an equal distance. That's probably about right there. Again from the back, holding it in place, going down the middle, trying to just hold it while we get that needle felting in place. Going in with my three needle, because I just want to make this a little bit of a quick process, being careful not to go too deeply so that I don't hit that pin that I've put in there. Once I've got it down in the main, I will take out my pin and go in with a singular needle. So let's come up here so that you can see. And you can see how that nicely disappears into the, the base. Um, if you had cut it with scissors, it would still it would just take a little bit more just to try and get it in there without showing. But because it was kind of a natural breakage, it goes in quite nicely. And this Parandale is really good for blending in. So that's why I recommend it to you. I could keep working at this for hours. I just keep sitting and prodding it, but I need to stop so that I can show you the next part of the process. So I'm just going to finish off here, just attaching around the base, making sure that they're all fully attached because you can see that's kind of coming away a little bit. So what I want to do is to get in there with my needle, make sure that that's attached and I'll be back. Okay, so now the ears are on and attached firmly, he's not going to lose those. Then we want to look at making his little round muzzle, as you can see on this one. So he wants a muzzle as well. So. What I do for that is I've got some natural coloured uh, carded wool bat. You only need a very small amount of this. I'm going to use my felting um, brush as well for this. I'm just going to pop him over there for a minute. And again, kind of eyeballing, remembering that this is going to shrink down as you felt it. So you want to kind of get the shape that you want and kind of just Put it together with your fingers before you start to needle fill it. doesn't need to be too tight and the reason it doesn't need to be too tight is that we're going to sew into it. Now <laughs> I know some of you are maybe not sewers or embroiderers so I'm going to give you different methods in order to finish this off. So now you've got it to there. Okay. I'm going to singular needle it and I'm just going to poke it around the edges to try and get its shape. Go through the middle occasionally but we're trying to make it into kind of a, a half ball should I say, a semicircular shape, a semi-sphere, <laughs> whatever one of those is called. Semi-spheres, it's a thing. Right okay, so I can see that this is going to be about the size that I'm wanting it. You, you do the size of muzzle that you would like on your bunny. I'm going to flip this over because this side is smooth and I don't want to catch all the hairs on my bunny on the brush um, part of it and start to pull them away. So what I want to do is kind of position it where I want it to be on his face hold it in place with my thumb, making sure that I'm not going to jab my thumb. And we're just going to go around the edges, kind of pulling in the fibres as we go. I don't want to pass down too much and get rid of the shape, but you can, it's kind of sculpting the muzzle. So this is where we differ from our uh, egg. We didn't do any form of sculpting at all. Oh, that's a ball of wool that's just fallen down. <laughs> Things like that happen in here quite often. I'm sure I've got a, a woolly ghost in here that likes to inspect all the walls. So 
he's got quite a big muddle, muzzle muggle <laughs> he's a muggle he's got quite a big muzzle this guy um, but I like to make all my bunnies have their own character and personality and they're not all going to be exactly the same if you want to make it exactly the same then obviously yes do go ahead with that I'm just going to start down the middle a little bit now but the main part of it is making sure that that bottom edge is felted into your base again you don't have to go in too far to do that try and give it that shape so now we're getting to the stage where he has a muzzle now you're going to do a similar process for this uh, for his little cotton tail that goes on the back let me poke that a little further there we go okay so now he's got his muzzle which is looking nice and obviously you can work this until you're happy with how it is and how it's sitting if you really don't like it and you don't like the position take it off you can just literally take it off and pull it it will slightly have maneuvered the fibers underneath but because you're going to be recovering it don't worry too much if it's too flattened just go in with a little bit more of the blue wool and build it back up again it's it's as easy as that you can't go wrong seriously just don't be too frightened just to take off something that you're not happy with the same with the ears if you don't think the position of the ears is as you want them take them off try it again it's not the end of the world okay so now we have his muzzle now we're going to do the same again so flipping back over and this is going to be his little cotton tail so again it's a similar shape if not absolutely the same <laughs> going in with my three needle just to get some shape to it trying to hold it together do be careful of your fingers at this point because you kind of maneuver and balance the bits of wool together and just felt it until it starts to hold in vaguely the shape you want it to um, also side note you can make felt balls in this way um, you just have to keep going a bit longer and make them more ball shaped <laughs> if you get my drift um, you can actually just make felt balls without any wet felting at all just by purely needle felting them and I think you can get the smaller ones to do this better than um, a, a large ball but it's all down to the amount of time that you want to put in to making something so I might have a little bit he's gonna have a very large tail and we, we won't care about it it's all gonna be good you can see the small amounts of wool that you actually need for this so if you get like a hundred gram bat of um, base you can make lots of these bunnies right okay so you're going to have your tail fitted so with my singular needle now same process down the middle of the ears right at the bottom of the egg shape and we're going to go around the base I'm trying to hold it in place and show you at the same time it's kind of at an angle I'm not bending my needle I am just angling it so that it goes in from an angle and shapes that tail as it goes in I'm hoping that you can see all this <laughs> try and lift it up for you a little bit but yeah you're going in and at an angle but down into that base so that it's attaching a parandale is really good for this because it, it's prone to attach anyway so it's it's like a dream to attach so you can see now i'm getting the shape of his tail that bit needs to go down a bit more 
and obviously you will work this until you've got that firmly firmly attached onto the back and in the shape that you want it and now you've got the base of your bunny what we're going to do next is to do the eyes and for this I will show you what you need and I will be back in one second once I've got them out on my desk so I'm back I'm just going to show you what I use for the eyes. Now these are tiny little weeny brads that you'd use in paper crafting and I find these make the best eyes of all. Obviously these are not things that you give to children. If you're going to give this as a gift I would suggest you don't give it to very small children at all because they'll obviously want to play with them. Um, so if you're going to do that I suggest that you needle felt little black eyes onto your bunny so that's another thing that you could do but for me I kind of I kind of like the, the shiny shiny little brads so these are what I'm going to use I'm also going to use some uh, felt and foam tacky glue and somewhere on my personage I have a little awl to make holes for the eyes so before I put the eyes in, I'm going to figure out where I want them to go and then just kind of make a little hole for them on either side, round about there. Just so you know where you're going to put them in. You can do this with a needle. I don't suggest you do it with scissors because that will just cause havoc and because the scissors are like not browned. Uh, it could cut into the, the wool fibres and the polystyrene underneath. So I've positioned where I want his eyes to be and now I'm going to get myself a little bit of this felt and foam glue. I squeeze some out onto this top of this lid where I keep the eyes and when it's dry you can just peel it off if you've got any left over. So fiddly bit you need to dip the end of the brad into the glue. If you've got tweezers, you might want to use that because look, I'm getting some on my fingers already. But, and then you push that into the hole that you made. If you've got a little bit of glue that goes onto the felt, don't worry. That will all be clear and dry clear. So don't worry about that at all. And that's one eye, and that's as simple as it is. Second eye, try and move all these bits of glue off my fingers first dipping it in, try and get a fair amount of the glue in because you don't want too much but you don't want too little so that it's not going to come up and hold underneath the head of that brad. I'm making a pig's ear of this one people. It does help if you've got some tweezers but let's go with that. So I found the hole, I'm going in, I have smudged it a little bit there but that's all good. Find the hole, push it in with the glue. The glue will come up and sit underneath the head of that brad. And you'll leave that to set for a little bit. Okay, so that's that bit all in. So make the awl, yeah, make the awl. Use the awl to make the holes. Get your glue out ready. Dip the ends of the brads into the glue with not too much glue, but just enough. So, and if it does go onto your wool, don't worry about it, it will dry clear, okay? And leave that to set for a little bit. So I'm just going to pop him down for a moment. Right, the other things that you can do is you can sew on the nose, which I will show you how to do in a minute. You could, if you wanted to, get a small piece of felt in whatever colour you want his nose to be and felt it on. If you want to be a purist and you want to do that, that's absolutely fine. On mine as well, you'll also notice I've got a little heart on them. Again, that's optional. You can needle felt a little heart shape onto yours in a different colour. And that's something that you can choose to do. You could do whatever shape you wanted. You could even needle felt a little tummy on if you wanted to. That is all up to you now. So now we've got that bit there. I want to give him some little pink cheeks 
but I don't want to use like pink wool. You could use pink wool, a little, a little small amount of pink wool just to give some cheeks underneath. But I've got another tip for you that I use for mine. I have got some uh, pastels. So some chalk pastels. These ones in particular were hair chalks, but you can use any chalk pastels. Um, and basically what I do is get a little bit on my finger. Let's move it up here. So get a little bit on my finger. And just underneath his eye, I'm just gonna give him a little blush. Just, just underneath the eye area. Same on the other side. I've been some chalk on my finger. You can do this with a Q-tip if you want to, because that's also a good way of doing it. You can do it with a brush. You want to get a little brush to do it with. I'm just using my finger because I'm feeling random. <laughs> so there, he's got little cheeks, little pink cheeks. So now I'm going to show you how I do the sewing. And um, if you wanted to do the needle felted version of that absolutely fine tiny little bit of felt on his nose and just needle felt it and shape it in like i showed you how to do the muzzle and the same for doing like a little line going down you could just get a very fine amount of felt uh, wool fibers roll them up and then just felt them down the way i do it is going to be an embroidered one and i'll show you how i do that next okay so i've got my needle i have threaded it with I use embroidery floss, so I've used two strands of like a cut off piece of embroidery floss, so it's not two thick full strands, you know when you pull it apart and make strands. Or you can use just sewing thread and make sure you've got two lengths similar, I've still got glue on my fingers, two lengths of a similar length and then just thread them up. Now I kind of figure out where I would like my nose to start and I kind of like that it's at the top end of this muzzle. So kind of like there. And what I'm going to do, I'm not going to put a knot in my thread. This is the, the part where you're kind of trying to figure out where it's going to come out. Um, so I'm going to take it through the body put it up there and just lose that end inside. I'm going to come down because we want to be in like a V shape. That's what we're going to try and attempt to do. So I'm coming down to there which is like in the middle of the muzzle. I'm going to angle it to come out of the muzzle at an equidistant point from that point there. If that makes sense. So it's coming down in a V shape. So we very like don't pull the thread, uh, otherwise you'll pull out the end. Can you see that's made that one side of the V? And then I'm going back from there down into that po point where that is to make the V shape. And then I'm going to try and lose my thread that way. Okay. So we pull it gently to make that V shape there. Now what I've forgotten is that I'm also going to do the line down. I'm ahead of myself. So I'm going back in. Um, I'm going in at that point there, right at the base of the V. And I'm going to bring a line down to about there, not quite the bottom of his muzzle, just a bit further down. You can do this wherever you want yours to be. It's all down to personal choice. And then take it out at an angle Again, not pulling it too tight. So don't pull it too tightly. And then, there. And that's the simple nose that you can make if you want to make it a little more complicated <laughs> or a little more detailed, should I say. Then what I'm gonna do is snip this off. And that will tend to go back in to the wool. If it doesn't, you just needle felt a little bit of wool over it, but the mine's gone straight back in. So now I have got some thread that is it's a shinier, lighter pink colour. And again, I've got two strands of it. This is a shiny floss. And I am going to attempt to thread this whilst 
whilst you're watching me. <laughs> you see, I sneakily threaded the other one without you seeing. Because it's not the easiest thing to do. Oh, that actually went okay. Again, I'm not going to knot it. I'm just going to leave it loose. I'm going to come in through the body, come out at the top of that V there. Hopefully. <laughs> if you're not quite hitting it, just take it back out a bit and then reposition it and we're there. Okay. So again, I don't want... Actually, I'm just going to hold that with my thumb and then we're just going to go across like a satin stitch if you're a sewer and you know what a satin stitch is it's basically just making sure that the threads lay together I'm trying to get it don't pull it too tight otherwise you will misshape the nose I just knocked my camera I do apologize people if you felt a bit seasick there for a minute And this is just an added bit. You don't have to do this if you don't want to. If you just want to needle felt a little pink nose on him, that would look equally as cute. But I was just showing you the way that I do mine, um, just to finish him off. Kind of making sure I've got all the nose covered. I've managed to go through that stitch somehow. I'll take it back through. There we go. Take it from this angle so I can see where I'm going in. I'm trying to do it to the camera but not actually looking, so I do apologise if this is a slightly wonk. On a wonk. But I think we're almost there. Once you've finished your little nose, I've just got bits of glue off my fingers on there. Also, we've got that little bit of thread that's there, and I just chop that out. So, chopping that out and get really close into it. And what I'll do is just grab an either felt around that area, and that's all perfectly good. Now, what I'm going to do with this thread. The one that's coming out of his nose end and take it through his body again find a spot to come out at that's not going to be causing too much havoc and gently pull it don't put it too tight just make sure that you've got all the little loopy bits of that through and chop it off then if you've disturbed some of the fibers doing that just needle felt them back in. It's easy. And there he is, a little Easter bunny. And he's going to go to a friend of mine. Um, so he's going to be a little gift. You can see them now together, brothers. I've still got glue on my fingers. <laughs> So there it is, all finished and complete. You can add in the little heart if you want to, so that's just a case of needle felting a little shape on the front of there. But it's not necessary, you don't have to do that. It's just added extras. You could stick on a little bow or a little flower in his ear if you wanted to. His or her ear, should I say. Um, and that's it. I hope you enjoy making these. You probably find like I do, that when you made one, they start to multiply. <laughs> as all bunnies do <laughs> and you'll have a desk full of them so i'll see you again very soon hope you have a lovely week please remember to like and subscribe if you've enjoyed this video and um, also hit the bell if you want to see when i do my uploads so ta-ta for now people and have a really good week <laughs>